Hey, everybody. My name is Lid Shaw, and I have a podcast called Recording Studio Rockstars, which brings listeners into the recording studio to learn from recording professionals so that they can make their best record ever and be a rock star of the studio themselves. And I thought I would share with you five tips for how to run a fantastic interview when you do a guest format podcast like mine. Podcasting is a fantastic way for you to share what you're passionate about, and it can also be an awesome way to build a side business to help support your interests. All right, first tip, be prepared for your interview. This is simple, but it makes a huge difference. If you go into your interview and you haven't done your homework and you're not prepared for it, you're gonna find yourself stumbling around and feeling like you're doing a terrible job of interviewing them, or you're gonna find yourself with a ton of edits to do. And it's a lot more fun to do a podcast episode when you don't have to go through and edit it like crazy. So first of all, if you have a new guest coming on and it's somebody that you don't know very well already, just take the time to Google them. Find out what kind of projects they've been working on. Find out stuff that maybe you didn't know that they had received success for. Maybe they've won awards for making different records or whatever the topic is in your show. Make sure that you're aware of those things so that you can bring them up during the interview if it seems appropriate to do so. Secondly, ask them for things that are important to them, recent projects. In my case, I do a podcast where I interview music producers and engineers and mixers and artists, and I like to just simply ask them for a discography. Send me a link to your Spotify playlist, for example, so that I have an idea of what kind of records you're really proud of. Because it's really embarrassing when you go to ask a question on a podcast and you find out you know, the answer is they didn't even work on that thing that you asked them about. So make sure that you know what it is that they're working on now. And also remember to ask them for the stuff that you're going to need in advance for later. So for example, if you do an interview with somebody now and it's a guest on your show, it might take you a little while before you do the final mix and then go to publish it. And you don't want to find yourself at that, you know, schedule crunch deadline, having to finish it and publish it. And then you're like, oh man, we forgot to get a photo from them. We forgot to get, you know, links to their website or social media. So ask for all that stuff up front in advance. I like to ask for a photo. Um, and I just basically ask for as large a photo as you've got. I don't worry about asking them for a specific size, but you want to make sure the resolution is great. Um, I also ask them for a short bio. This is maybe a couple of paragraphs, and it's them introducing themselves in a way that you might be able to use as an introduction on your show. And then I ask them for a discography, maybe five to ten different records or projects that they've worked on so that I have a good sense of what they're excited about now. And also I ask them for their important website links or their social media links so that we've got all of that to include in the video description or in the podcast show notes when we go to publish later on. If you have all of this stuff at the beginning of your interview, you're just going to find yourself feeling a lot more confident and a lot more prepared as you go into the interview. And it's going to make everything go more smoothly later on. Okay, tip number two is to make sure that you've set up your interview space and you've got all your tools nearby, which make it really easy for you to conduct the interview and not feel like you're disrupted or interrupted in the middle of it or have to stumble around looking for something during the middle of the podcast. All right, so some of the stuff I like to have ready before I go is just make sure that I've got water or coffee right nearby so that I can grab it without spilling it on any of the keyboard. And then over on the other side, I just like to have the most basic note taking that's ever been invented, which is a few sharp pencils and a pad of paper. And that way, you know, despite the fact that we've got all this great technology like iPads and a computer that we can type things onto, there is still nothing that's faster than scribbling a note really quickly. Um, with a hand off to the side. And then just make sure that you've got your keyboard all laid out in front of you so that you can see everything. Uh, one of the things that's off camera right now, but I actually have a mute button built into this microphone so that I can easily mute my voice in the middle of an interview. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But just make sure that you got your tools set up in front of you. And don't forget to take a bathroom break too so you can stay focused on the whole thing and not be interrupted later. So then in front of me while I'm working, I've got a big screen up here and maybe you've got a laptop or whatever, but have all your questions set up. I like to conduct my interviews now as a Skype interview. Maybe you're using something like Zoom, but that means that it's easy to have a screen in front of you where you can have all your questions in advance. 
Okay, right here you can see that I'll have a Google folder set up and I might have um, the bio from the guest that I'm gonna interview. Then I'll also have a document that I create that I call the intro, which actually has all my questions. Here's the photo that the guest sent in advance. And then this right here is, here's a nice trick for you. Just take a photo of the notes that you take after the interview and just upload them to the same Google Doc so that you've got them and you can refer back to them later. Okay, now jumping ahead, you'll see this is what the guest might have sent as a bio, about a paragraph there, and then links to social media and different YouTube videos and things like that, and records that are really important to them. And then in the next tab, I'll actually organize this into something that I can use while I'm doing the interview. I'll start with a title that I think I might use, or I may come back and add the title after I've done the interview. I'll include this introduction that I'm always going to use on every podcast episode. And this basically lets a listener know right away what the show is going to be all about, what they're going to learn from it, and why they might want to listen. And then I'll copy paste their bio into my intro and maybe reshape it just a little bit so that it's easy to read. But I like to actually use the bio that they sent I think initially when I started the podcast, I thought that I might want to always have to write it in my own words. And funny enough, I found that sounded more generic than if I actually just used the bio that the guest sent, because then each introduction is kind of a little more unique and it's a little bit more personable to the guest who's going to be on the show. So that works. And it also makes it really easy for you. So you don't have to rewrite all everything. Um, and then right here, I find this is a great little tip. A lot of times I'll reach out to people I know in the industry or previous guests and ask them if they want to recommend a new guest. And so I'll make a note to myself to thank that person for the introduction before I get started. And then for my show, I like to start by saying, you know, please welcome the guest on and are they ready to rock? And then we jump into questions. And here's a quick glance at what my questions sheet looks like. So this is part of being prepared here where um, I'll have a series of questions that I might always ask on a show and they're there if I need them, but I don't necessarily have to use them. And then here are a bunch of questions that I have written for this guest based on listening to their discography and getting a feel for what their music sounds like. And these are questions that I think might be important to the listener. There are also questions that may have just popped into my head as I listened to a particular track and thought, um, for example, here, you know, like, oh, what's a better use of these vocal effects for reverb or delay? And then also, my podcast interview format is pretty long. I've actually decided to do a long format show, so my shows can go up to an hour to two hours long. And so I actually intentionally will schedule a mid-interview break in the middle where we pause and we can each have a chance to go refill our waters or take a bathroom break or something like that, and then come back and keep doing the interview as a second half. Okay, next tip, number three, sound check. This is really important. Make sure everything is working before you actually jump in and do the interview. In fact, even for this video shoot, we had to do that in setting this up. So make sure you do that for your podcast. That might be as simple as doing a test call with the audio and video if you're using Skype. If you're doing an in-person interview, it might just be recording a little bit with both mics and hearing people's voices and then play it back so that you know that everything's working and you don't have any funny clocking issues or weird noises or any of that kind of stuff. And then if you're in Zoom, you can also do a test recording and then play that back and make sure that the audio sounds great before you go and do the actual interview and record it. Now, watch out for one thing though. Every once in a while, an online video conferencing app could actually switch the microphone input on you when you go to record the second time. So just double check the settings one last time. I had this happen with one of my really important guests. And even though I had set up this fancy microphone, I was in a hotel room and the entire interview was just my voice on a laptop mic about two feet away from me. And that was a bummer. Which brings up the next part about sound checking, which is microphone placement. This is really important. A lot of times when people aren't familiar with audio and using a microphone very well, they think that you could just kind of put a microphone anywhere and as long as it hears the voice, that should be good enough. But there are so many podcasts out there that the sound is just kind of terrible or it's far away or it's too echoey and it sounds like it's in a big open office. So the tip for making sure that your mic sounds great is 
position it like you're doing a vocal recording. So you can see this microphone right here is about like, you know, a hang tan away from my voice, basically about a hand's width away from the voice. And I'm not actually talking directly into it. Um, because that can create P pops, which is the blast of wind and air that goes from my voice into the microphone. And it can create a huge low frequency thud. So if you set it up where you're talking past the microphone at an angle, the mic can pick up your voice clearly, but you're not going to get the wind blasts. P -p -p. If you say peanut butter popcorn, you're going to hear that go through. Here's something, this is called a pop filter. You can also get one of these things and you just set it up in front of the microphone and talk through it and it'll cut on the P-pops. Um, or your microphone may have a foam filter on it like this one does. So this thing is a foam filter that just simply covers the mic. It's like a windscreen. And then lastly for the sound check, uh, just make sure that you've turned off all the things that are gonna interrupt your podcast right in the middle, like your phone ringing. Um, make sure that you turn off your heat and air conditioning if it's too loud unless it's going to cook you and you you know unless you don't have a choice but don't have a fan on in the background don't have the computer fan too close to the microphone where it's picking up the noise don't have weird buzzes and hums like refrigerators that are going to be constantly going and make sure that you already let the dog out so the dog's not going to bark in the middle of your interview basically no bings dings or bangs all right and make sure that the space you're in sounds good so a lot of times people will set up to do a podcast interview in an empty office space that's one of the worst sounding spaces because everything's super echoey and sounds far away a typical home setting that might sound good for a podcast interview is more of a bedroom or a living room setting where there are big soft couches and soft things and curtains so find a space in your house or wherever you're working where you can get that kind of background Tip number four is making sure that you feature your guest. If you're going to do an interview show, you want to make it all about the guest. This means taking that bio that the guest sent in advance that you turned into a short introduction and actually reading it in front of your guest, either in an in-person interview or if you're on a Skype or a Zoom interview where it's over a video conference, make sure that they're hearing their introduction because that gives them a sense of being built up and it makes them feel special. So you're gonna start out on a really good foot with your interview. And have your next question ready. So while the guest is answering your last question, as I showed you in the Google document, highlight your next question so you know what you're gonna ask. Wait patiently and wait quietly while they're answering a question. Don't say a word. Don't interject with ums and ahs and ahas because it's actually going to interrupt them. Just let them finish talking and when they're ready and they leave you enough of a space, you can just cut right into the next question and you'll sound much more professional and you'll have far less of the ums and the ahs and the filler words. And then also, as I explained earlier, use a mute button if you can. If you have a physical mute button on your microphone like I do, Mute your voice after you ask the question so that you're totally clean and quiet on your track while the guest is answering the question. Perhaps you're recording individual tracks and you're going to mix it later, or perhaps you're recording both of them together. Either way, you don't want to have strange noises and things being bumped around and even the sound of your pencil scribbling on a pad of paper while the guest is answering a question if you can avoid it. And then finally, Tip number five is keep it super simple, KISS, which means make sure that your listeners, your audience can really understand the content that's being shared. So if you have a guest on the show who might be giving you advanced answers to questions, don't be afraid to circle back and rephrase the answer in a simple way if you think that it would help your audience better understand what the answer was all about. I do this all the time on my show and I've had many people come back and say that they really appreciate that I took something that sounded sort of complex or complicated and re-explained it for them. In fact, a lot of times we use terminology that might sound really familiar and we know what it means when we're talking about you know, our industry or whatever the topic is. But for somebody who's a beginner or brand new, they might not have any idea what that means. It might be too general and you might need to really break it down into the core elements. And if your guest maybe gives you an answer that didn't quite answer the question the way you were hoping, 
don't be afraid to re-ask the question maybe in another way or just kind of keep circling it back towards a certain topic if you think that that's a really important one for your audience. Which brings us, of course, to the most important point of all when it comes to asking questions, which is ask the kind of questions that you think your audience is going to want to know about. I mean, if people are taking an hour you know, 30 minutes, two hours out of their time to listen to you and to listen to your guest do an interview on a show, you owe it to them to give them the kind of content that they actually want to hear. They're probably here to solve something that's a bit of a pain point for them. And if you're giving them the answers that's going to help them out, um, you know, make sure you do. And one of the challenges is, of course, while you're doing that as a host, is you know here you are with all these tools laid out and you've got the questions up on the screen and you've highlighted the next one and you're feeling like really great about doing your interview and you're sort of all about you in that moment <laughs> well don't forget to actually listen to what the guest is saying in their answer i found myself many times so focused on the next question i actually kind of blanked out and forgot to hear what the end of their answer was so make sure you give yourself that chance to listen and if they take it in a certain direction just sort of pivot in that direction and go with it and let let the interview go in the direction that it wants to go knowing that you've always got a really great next question up your sleeve if and when you need it. And also very importantly, at the end of your podcast interview, make sure you give your guests a chance to let the listeners know where they can find them. What's their website? What social media would they like your listeners to go to to follow them, for example? A lot of time a guest might come on a show and they may have sort of a what's known as a call to action to try and build their own audience and connect with people further. So give them a chance to tell you what that is and tell your listeners where they should go because you want to show your gratitude to the guest and to your listeners for staying with you this long and make sure that everybody can connect afterwards. So once again, my goal for this is to give you five tips to help make sure that you have a fantastic interview with your guests, that your guest sounds great, that you feel comfortable and sound great as a host. And so your audience has a fantastic time listening and they get some great takeaways from your show. Again, number one, make sure that you're prepared for your podcast interview. Number two, make sure that you have all the tools you need set out in front of you so that you're physically prepared for the podcast interview and you won't be interrupted. Number three, make sure you sound check beforehand so that everything sounds great. Your microphone sounds great. Your guest microphone sounds great and everything is recording properly. Number four, focus on your guest. Make sure that all the attention of the listeners is on the guest, not on the many ways that you as a host might be interrupting and disrupting the podcast interview. And finally, keep it simple. Ask the kind of questions that your podcast audience wants to know about and make sure that no matter how complex any of the answers get, you keep reframing it in a way that brings it back to the simplicity so that your audience can really have a great takeaway from it and have a fantastic time listening to your podcast and they'll come back and listen again. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you got a great bunch of tips out of it. Again, my name is Lidge Shaw and my podcast is Recording Studio Rockstars. Come check it out. If you have any questions at all or comments about what you would like to know more about as far as creating a great podcast yourself or stuff that you've learned doing your own podcast that you think would help everybody else out, please drop a comment below right here in this YouTube video and we'll see you guys in the comments. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit the like button too and subscribe to this channel because there's a lot more great videos coming. Cheers.